Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Fullerton, and today I want to take a little bit of time to talk to you about momentum and impulse. Our objectives are going to be to define momentum and calculate the momentum of object, and on the other hand we'll also look at defining impulse and calculating the impulse applied to an object. So let's dive right in. Momentum. Let's assume we have a car speeding toward you at 27 meters per second, about 60 miles per hour. Can you put your hand out to stop that car? Well, unless you're Superman, you're probably going to become pretty messy in a hurry. Why not? Why is that? Well, momentum measures how hard it is to stop an object, and a car moving at that velocity has a lot of momentum. It is a vector quantity, its symbol is P, and the units are kilograms times meters per second, which is the same thing as a newton times a second. The formula for momentum is very straightforward. Momentum equals mass times velocity. Let's see how we could apply that. In our sample problem, two trains, Big Red and Little Blue, have the same velocity, but Big Red has twice the mass of Little Blue. What can you say about their momenta? Well, since they have the same velocity and Big Red has twice the mass, it must have twice the momentum. Therefore, the momentum of Big Red must be twice as big as the momentum of Little Blue. Very straightforward. Let's look at another one. The magnitude of the momentum of an object is 64 kilogram meters per second. So we know its momentum is 64 kilograms times meters per second. We also know momentum is mass times velocity. If the velocity is doubled, what's going to happen to the momentum of the object? Well, if you double the velocity by multiplying the right-hand side by 2, m times 2v, you also have to multiply left-hand side by 2. So you would have twice the momentum, or 128 kilogram meters per second. In another example, we have a D-3A bomber with a mass of 3,600 kilograms. It departs from its aircraft carrier with a velocity of 85 meters per second due east. What is its momentum? Well, that's pretty straightforward. Momentum equals mass times velocity, or 3,600 kilograms times our velocity of 85 meters per second due east gives us a momentum of about 3.06 times 10 to the fifth kilogram meters per second east. After it drops its torpedo, its new mass is 3,000 kilograms, and it attains a cruising speed of 120 meters per second. What is its new momentum? Well, its new momentum, we can find the same way, P equals mv, now its mass is 3,000 kilograms. Its velocity is 120 meters per second. So that would be a momentum of 3.60 times 10 to the fifth kilogram meters per second east. Pretty straightforward. Now, as you observe in this problem, momentum can change. And we call a change in momentum an impulse. That is given the symbol J, and all it is is delta P. J equals delta P. And remember that delta anything is always the final minus the initial. Or you might write that as the current value minus the initial value. It means the same thing. So impulse is just a change in momentum. It too is a vector. It has a direction because momentum changes have direction. Let's take a look and follow up with our D3 bomber problem. Our D3A bomber, which had a momentum of 3.6 times 10 to the fifth kilogram meters per second, comes to a halt on the ground. What impulse is applied? Well, if we're looking for impulse, that's change in momentum, which is going to be our final minus our initial momentum, or our final momentum is zero because it stops on the ground, minus 3.6 times 10 to the fifth kilogram meters per second, which is going to be negative 3.6 times 10 to the fifth kilogram meters per second. Now, since we had defined east as the positive direction, our momentum, or pardon me, our impulse is 3.6 times 10 to the fifth kilogram meters per second negative. So we could also write this, if this is east, our impulse is also equal to positive 3.6 times 10 to the fifth kilogram meters per second west which makes sense. If the airplane is flying one direction east to stop it, you must apply an impulse the opposite direction to cancel its momentum to bring it to rest. Let's take a look at one last problem. 
We have a six kilogram block sliding to the east across a horizontal frictionless surface with a momentum of 30 kilogram meters per second. It strikes an obstacle. The obstacle exerts an impulse of 10 newtons per second, 10 newton seconds, excuse me, to the west on the block. Find the speed of the block after the collision. Well, we can use our definition of impulse, J equals delta P, which change in momentum is going to be change in mass times velocity. But the masses aren't changing in this problem, so this could be mass times change in velocity, which will be mass times our final velocity minus our initial velocity. So this becomes mv minus mv initial. If we solve for our velocity itself, velocity is going to be the impulse plus mv initial over the total mass. If 10 newton seconds plus our mass times our velocity initial, 30 kilogram meters per second, all over our total mass of 6 kilograms, which comes out to be about 3.3 meters per second. Thanks. Hopefully, hopefully this was helpful. Have a great day.